Hey, what's going on, everybody? We are back up here in uh, North Carolina in China Grove, the Doobie Brothers song, in West Lawn Memorial Park. We're here to visit the grave of Michael John Lockwood. And if that name doesn't ring a bell, then his uh, WWE or wrestling name will ring a bell as Crash Holly. My favorite is when people drive by behind me, they're like, what in the world? So we're here to visit the grave of Crash Holly and pay our respects and see what it looks like. It's somewhere right over in there. But before we get there, we're going to talk about his life and learn about all the things that he's done before we visit the grave. So if this is your first time here, welcome. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please consider liking, subscribing, sharing, you know, doing all those things. It helps with the algorithm and all that stuff. And if this isn't your first time here, hey, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the video. So let's get to talking about Mr. Lockwood's life and uh, let's get to learning some things. So one thing I noticed when I pulled in, there's two different cemeteries. There's this side where Mr. Lockwood's at, which is a, a newer section. And then across the street, right right over there is the older cemetery and so i think i think we're going to do the walkthrough over there i feel like that's a good place to do the walkthrough so let's do that and this is more our style isn't it look at all this isn't this beautiful look at all these older pieces look how nice look how beautiful so yeah Michael John Lockwood was born August 25th, 1971 in San Francisco, California. He was raised in uh, Pacifica where he graduated from Terry Nova High School. He became interested in professional wrestling in the eighth grade inspired by Brady Boone. Lockwood debuted in 1989 as Johnny Pearson in Bay Area Wrestling where he wrestled until 1994. And in 96, he joined the All-Pro Wrestling, where he became known as the Leprechaun, Aaron O'Grady. So Lockwood joined Philadelphia, Pennsylvania-based Extreme Championship Wrestling. And look, I know sometimes you hear that. There's a daggum train coming through right now. What's the odds in that? Okay, so I'm going to stop at Extreme, and we're going to let the train go by. Yay trains. There hasn't been anything in the news about those lately. Okay, so I may have to just speak a little bit louder. The train, for what it's worth, the, the main part's gone. So, he joined the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania-based Extreme Championship Wrestling. And I know sometimes you the word extreme kind of gets overinflated. I'm like, extreme! But no, these dudes were for real. They were legit. After he joined it after wrestler Taz reviewed a tape of a match between O'Grady and Michael Modest and referred him to ECW owner Paul Heyman. Aaron O'Grady lost four untelevised matches in ECW, including a dark match at November to Remember. Following his stint in ECW, Lockwood returned to APW, where he performed until October of 98. How beautiful is that? Well, it's beautiful, isn't it? So Grady... So Grady wrestled Grimes in a tryout match for the trains. Yay, trains. It's late. I would just sit here and wait, but I got to be honest with y'all. Like, I've, I got to get back to the house. Like, I'm a long ways away from the house. So it would be awful nice if that train wasn't so loud. I mean, it's got, it's a long haul, though. It just had more engines connected to the middle of it, you know, because I'm a train engineer. <laughs> All right, so O'Grady wrestled Grimes in a tryout match for World Wrestling Federation in January of 98, and both were signed to contracts in November of 98. Lockwood was sent to Power Pro Wrestling, the WWF's development promotion, to train. Here, he won the Power Pro Wrestling Young Guns Championship and the PPW Tag Team Championship. Lockwood debuted on WWF television as Crash Holly, the storyline cousin of Bob Hardcore Holly, on the August 16th, 1999 episode of Raw is War. They became known as the Holly Cousins. Their relationship was strained once, and Hardcore frequently threatened Crash when they took the gimmick of claiming to be super heavyweights over 400 pounds each, Crash 
will carry a scale to ringside to weigh in before matches. Ooh, all right, so now we're back on the other side. So at Survivor Series in November of 2001, Holly took part in a battle royale that would guarantee the winner immunity from being fired that was won by test. Throughout the remainder of 2001 and early 2002, Holly continued to wrestle primarily on house shows and the WWF secondary television shows. And on June 30th of 2003, Lockwood was released from the WWE, but in 2002, he opened Crash Holly School of Professional Wrestling here in North Carolina. He could see the writing on the wall, I guess you could see, and on November 1st of 2003, Mad Mikey and Roy Fox defeated Quentin Lee and the Human Time Bomb with Ricky Steamboat as the special guest referee for the Heartland Wrestling Association in what turned out to be Lockwood's final match. Just five days later, Lockwood passed away on November 6, 2003 at his friend and fellow wrestler Stevie Richards' house in Florida. He was 32 years old. He was found partially clothed with a pool of vomit around his face, empty bottles of prescription drugs, and a partially consumed bottle of booze were found nearby. His death, caused by choking on his own vomit, was officially ruled suicide. And here's the grave of Michael John Lockwood Crash. Uh, there you go, August. Here, this. Clean that off a little bit. How about that? It says Mike, November 6th of 2003. And there's the full grave from there to there. But yeah, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. Crash Holly, like, I remember, I mean, I, I enjoyed watching him wrestle. Like, I don't know, just that different era. I don't know, maybe because I'm older, I always think those that's that era was better, and maybe that's just age. Maybe you do that as you get older. You think your time is better. So yeah, um, down in the comments, what was your favorite match he was a part of, or the group, or like when they fought the Dudleys, and all that stuff. There was some good stuff that he was a part of. Like yeah, he wasn't a Stone Cold or The Rock, or you know, somebody like that, but he was, an integral piece of the cog, you know, that was wrestling. So yeah, thanks again for watching. I really do appreciate it. Like I enjoy going and filming and doing all these things and, you know, bringing you guys along for the ride. So let's uh, do our little cheesy thing and we'll, you never know what you're gonna find on the back roads. I'll see you guys next time.